Okay, welcome back to a new uh, math tutorial. In this video, I would like to explain how you can solve quadratic equations easily. Yeah? And in order to do that, I would like to derive a formula, uh, the so-called PQ formula, and then calculate an example to get used of how to use this formula yeah? in, in the most general case. So in order to explain how to, how to derive this formula and how to use it, uh, I would start now with a simple function here, quadratic function, which uh, is given as ax squared plus bx plus c. Yeah, and this is the most general form how to write down in a quadra quadratic equation. Yeah? Any type of quadratic, quadratic equation you can, uh, you, can f uh, you can actually transform into this function here that is given. Yeah, and if we if we draw that in a coordinate system, uh, which could be, uh, for example, look like that, we have here our x-axis, we have here our y-axis, and then uh, maybe we can choose another color for that. Um, we can we can represent this uh, equation here uh, with a parabola. Yeah, this always works. So this parabola could, for example, look like that. Yeah, you could, it could also be rotated by 90 degree or rotated by 180 degree. It doesn't matter so much. It's just one possibility how this parabola could look like depending on the coefficient that you add. And then, of course, uh, here in this case, um, you have two intersections with the x-axis. And this is also the most general case. Yeah? Sometimes you have parabolas that only hit... Uh, the x-axis in one point, yeah? so you have only one intersection, or it could be um, that it actually does not um, intersect with the x-axis at all, then you have zero solutions. But here in this case, we only concentrate now on the fact that we have a parabola with two uh, intersections. And uh, of course, if we want to calculate now the values of x, uh, these values of x where this intersection happens, then we have to set this whole equation actually equal to zero. Yeah? So it means we have to calculate the roots of that function. Yeah? Uh, so I will write here roots of uh, y of x. And this is, of course, given as uh, y of x equal to zero. Yeah? This is, by definition, the root of that function. And then we can write here ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. Yeah? Yeah, if this was a linear equation, it would be quite simple. We can just use some algebra and at the end, it, uh, we directly get a value for x. Yeah? However, in, in this case, in the quadratic, for a quadratic equation, it's not so simple. Yeah? We, have to, uh, we have to first uh, yeah, derive a formula for that. And um, in order to make it a little bit easier, I would, in the beginning, uh, divide this whole equation by a, which is no problem. We can do that because here on the right side, we have a zero. Yeah? Um, and uh, this means that whenever we divide zero by anything, it doesn't change. Yeah? And But here on the left side, we can see that it gets a little bit easier to handle. So this turns out, this, this a of course vanishes here in this case. Yeah? And here we would get a b over a and a c over a. Yeah? And this we can write down just once more to make it easier to, to uh, make it easier visible. So we have a square plus uh, b over a x plus c over a and this is equal to zero. Yeah. Um, and uh, now uh, what we can do in the next step, we can actually uh, simplify it a little bit more by replacing this fractal b over a with the constant p yeah? and this part here would be actually our q. Um, it doesn't change anything. Uh, the, the equation is still the same but again so we have x square plus px plus q um, equal to zero of course. Okay and now the the real mass starts so to say. So um, we we want to if we want to isolate x we cannot do this directly of course as you can see here but we can use a trick which is called completing the square and for that we use uh, as you might know, heard about already the so-called um, first binomial formula yeah and this is given as a plus b squared is equal to a square plus two ab plus b square. 
And uh, we, we don't go now from left to right. We go actually the, the opposite direction, uh, from, from the right side to the left side. And we have to figure out how we can change this um, equation on the left side in order to use this completing of the square. And uh, yeah, this it turns out that uh, x squared does not change at all. Uh, plus px, this term also doesn't change. But this px yeah, is actually that part here, this um, 2ab. Yeah? So in order to get then this b square, we have to take this p and divide it by 2. So uh, this would be p over 2, p half. And then of course we have here our b square, which means that we have to also square that. And because we added now something to our equation, we have to subtract it also later in order to not change the value of our equation. And then plus q, this remains of course unchanged and then we have this equal to zero. And this is a very huge step forward because now we can actually identify this part here with this part. Yeah, so this is then uh, this is then our, uh, or we can use this first binomial formula in order to write down x plus uh, p half squared minus p half squared plus q equal to zero. And now we have isolated x, so now it gets uh, quite easy to, to handle this equation. First, of course, we would like to bring this q on the other side by subtracting it. And we have to uh, bring this p half squared also on the right side by adding it up. And then uh, at the end, what turns out is that we have x plus p half squared is equal to p half squared minus q. And then uh, in the next step, we want to we want to uh, we want to solve this for x as I said so we have to calculate or we have to take the square root of that um, and uh, now we can we can write it in the following x plus p half so the square root of both sides which gives a square root of p half uh, squared minus q yeah this is a sum or a difference which means we cannot take the square root of each part individually yeah we have to uh, we have to write it in this way. There is no other way, other possibility to simplify this further. Now the question is only whether this is only one solution or more, because here I said already in, in this uh, graph that we can have up to two. The question is of course from where the second solution comes. Yeah? And uh, this we can easily demonstrate by uh, writing for example um, x square equal to 25, a very simple quadratic equation which we can solve directly by, um, by taking the root, the square root. And then the result is uh, x equal to 5, which is half of the solution actually. But if you insert minus 5, you will see it is also solving this equation. Minus 5 squared is also 25. So it means that the full solution is x1, 2 uh, plus minus 5. Yeah? So um, when it comes to square roots, we always have to, uh, we have to take two solutions into account. Yeah? So we have to write here x plus p half plus minus square root of p half squared minus q. Uh, and this gives, as I said, two solution. Yeah? Uh, and then we can write here x1, 2, we, when we bring this uh, to the other side, minus p half, then this gives um, minus p half plus minus square root p half squared minus q. And the reason why I don't write here uh, p squared over four is because this is a little bit easier to calculate. When we have once identified p half, we only have to square that and this then makes the solution a little bit easier. So as I said, we have two solutions now, x1, 2, and we have to always um, add one time this square root term and one time subtract it. And um, I would now um, calculate one example in order to really use this formula that we have derived now here. And this is, as I said, 
the so-called PQ formula. This is also my most favorite formula when it comes to quadratic, for, uh, quadratic equations because it's really straightforward to solve it with that. Okay, so now what we do, uh, we, we will, as I said, we want to make an example. I have prepared already one, uh, which makes it a little bit simple. So we have two x squared plus, for example, eight x uh, minus 10 equal to zero. So the first thing which we have to understand is that we cannot solve this equation directly with the PQ formula because um, we have here uh, assumed that there is no constant in front of x squared, no coefficient. So what we can do, we can actually uh, divide this whole equation, not by a, but of course by two. Yeah? So we get rid of this two. And uh, this means that uh, at the end, we get here just an x squared plus, uh, and then of course we have to um, divide eight by two, which gives a four x. And then we also have to divide 10 by two, which gives a five, and this is equal to zero. And now we can use uh, the PQ formula that we have derived before. But of course, in order to do that, we have to first identify some terms. So this is our P actually, yeah, uh, in front of that X. Um, let's go here. Yeah, so this is uh, our, our P term. And here for Q, we have to take into account that we have here a minus sign. Yeah? So this means that uh, our Q is not only five, but it is also minus five. And now it gets easy. Yeah? Now we have everything what we need. So uh, this is the only thing where, where many people also do mistakes. So this, this one should really take into account. Uh, and now we use our PQ formula to solve that. So we have to first calculate P half, which means uh, four over two, which is of course two plus minus square root. And then as I said, you only have to square that plus, uh, which gives four and then minus five uh, we have to uh, replace this minus here with a plus because of minus Q, which gives four plus five. Yeah? And now you can also see why I have chosen these coefficients because now it's get quite easy. So um, two plus the square root of four plus five is of course nine. And uh, then in the next step, uh, we have to calculate the square root of nine, which is three. So we get two plus minus three. Um, and then if we, if we want to calculate the first solution, x1, we have to calculate two plus three, which is five. And the second solution here would be uh, two minus three, which is actually one. Uh, and these are the two results of our, of our example here. Yeah? If you want, you can just draw that parabola or plot this with any, any program uh, that you like, uh, some, some algebra system, for example, or you can also use your calculator to draw that function. And then you will see that exactly at these two position, five and minus one, you will have uh, intersections with the x-axis. Yeah? These are the roots of the function, so to say. Okay, and I hope that this was instructive. I hope that you really learned something beneficial uh, for your for your studies for your school time and uh, if you want to know more about this uh, as usual please put it into the comment section if you like the video uh, especially also the way how it is done please hit the like button um, please subscribe my channel if you of course if you don't want to miss any video but also if you want to support me and make my channel growing then i would be really thankful if you if you subscribe um, and also, um, I hope that in any case, uh, we would see each other very soon for a new tutorial.